Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to another refrigeration video with UXW Bill. I'm making this video today because it just so happens that I bought a new refrigeration related tool. This is a Yellow Jacket piercing refrigerant recovery set of pliers. If you're interested in purchasing one of these, depending upon what happens in the video that you're about to watch, I'll post a link down in the video description where you can certainly get one of your own. Of course, you can also search the web and buy it from anywhere that you happen to find it for sale. I don't really know how this is going to go. These are billed as a tool that's used when you want to dispose of an unwanted, undesired, or broken down refrigeration system like the one that we have here. This is a little five or 6,000 BTU LG branded window air conditioner. My father bought a bunch of these many years ago and this one was in use in my bedroom until the fan motor started to develop bad bearings and then one day the bearings finally got so bad that it ground to a dead stop ended up replacing it with another unit and it's been sitting around outside waiting for its turn to have its refrigerant charge properly recovered so that I could actually scrap the rest of it and so that's what we're going to do in today's video I have a freshly vacuumed down recovery tank there. I have the recovery machine and also have this Anchor branded power bank. I actually bought that with my own money. It's not a freebie. I keep hoping that of all the uh, companies that approach me about reviewing products that one of these days somebody who sells power banks will come along and I can scam I mean review one for free. <laughs> but that hasn't actually happened yet. Now because I don't know what's going to happen here, whether it'll be good or bad, as this tool did not come with any directions for its use, and I haven't actually looked to see if there are any out there on YouTube, but I did check Yellow Jacket's website and it came up empty-handed. So I have no idea what's going to happen. This, this could go terribly wrong, and I could end up letting all the refrigerant leak out of this and not being able to recover any of it, which would be greatly unfortunate. For those who are wondering, yes, I hold my EPA 608 Universal card, so I am at least in that sense qualified to do this. I also attended a complete course at, a community, at an area community college on residential, commercial, and installation aspects of heating and air conditioning. In fact, about a year ago, my instructor announced that he was going to retire, and he asked me if I wanted to take over his night classes, and I almost did. The reason I didn't is because they've got the Canvas Learning Management System tail wagging the dog at that particular community college and I started to go through their required onboarding and all that lovely stuff and when it came to the point where they wanted to have me go through this course on writing HTML I went to the powers that be and I said look I've been a computer consultant for almost 30 years I work in IT as my day job I assure you I know how to write HTML and I really would like it if you'd let me proficiency out of this nope they wouldn't let me do it, so on my merry way I went. I never did investigate that particular avenue, never ended up teaching any of those classes, and maybe as busy as I am at my day job and as tired as I am when I get home, maybe that was for the better. But I most certainly digress. So the first thing we're going to do here, since I've got all the hoses hooked up and everything because I have no idea how much time I'll have to do this, I'm going to clamp onto this low-pressure suction line here. You can see this little stub of tubing here. This is probably where the system was charged from the factory. I don't know if they would have charged it in on the low side when they manufactured this, or if they actually would have charged it in on the high side. Maybe they even did a little bit of both. Maybe this was just for factory testing to verify that the unit was properly charged and functional. I don't know. And I also don't know what's going to happen here. But I guess you only live once, so we're going to try this. Usually I would use a saddle valve to do this. I'm much more used to those. I've had those go wrong before in times past, but that was on a system that had leaked out most of its refrigerant charge. So again, I've got no idea what's going to happen here. Probably something bad, but we're going to find out. Well, I don't think it really went in as far as it needed to. So I think it started to go wrong already. <laughs> Which is just the kind of luck that I would have. I didn't puncture it though, so I can try again. I'm going to put the camera down because this may be more of a two-handed kind of a job than not. 
and I really don't want to have the refrigerant charge get out of this thing without properly recovering it. There's not much here, only about 7 ounces, but still, it is refrigerant 22, and we're told at least that the chlorinated nature of that refrigerant is bad for the ozone layer. Not that 7 ounces is going to make or break it, but I still want to do things as properly as I can here, so give me a moment, I'm going to try again. Okay, as soon as the candy ham focuses, that time I sure got it. I have no idea if it's leaking or not, but we are definitely under pressure here. So we'll go ahead and we'll open this up and make sure these hoses are as tight as I think they are, because wouldn't that just be hilarious? Got a freshly vacuumed down recovery cylinder here. We're going to open this up and open this up, and we're going to bleed clear back to here. That should be enough. Again, this cylinder is under vacuum, so we're probably going to end up pulling a fair bit of the charge just by virtue of that fact alone. You can definitely hear it flowing. All right, well now I know our lines are truly bled. So we'll turn this on. Don't know if I mentioned it, but I meant to. The inverter in that thing would not start this machine. that I didn't discover that while I was trying to do this. This will probably take a couple minutes. We might even see some frost start to build on the bottom of the compressor here. It's certainly cooler to the touch down there than it is up here because so much of the refrigerant is going to be trapped in the oil. And if we look here, I think this is a blowout plug on the body of the compressor in case the pressure gets too high and nothing else will stop it and something else in the refrigeration circuit doesn't fail first this will I should have brought the IR camera out today looks like maybe it's leaking a little bit there's some oil around there this go into a slight vacuum and then I'll go ahead and shut it down when I shut it down the pressure will probably come back up because again there's refrigerant that's trapped in the oil here and it'll start to rise out of there as vapor and enter the rest of the system so it may take a few tries to get all of this refrigerant out of this system we're getting very close just hit zero PSI, so we'll close that valve, and yeah, you'll see it start to creep up gradually. So we'll turn that off, let it rest for a couple moments, and then we'll go again. We're not going to get everything, it won't be perfect, but we'll have certainly gotten the majority of it, and then this air conditioner can be safely scrapped without risking any damage to the environment or trouble for myself on the legal front. You can see it's gradually creeping up again. Turn the machine back on. And we'll probably have to do that a couple of times. There you saw it pulling into a vacuum. I also want to make sure I'm not filling my tank with atmosphere, which is definitely a risk here. That may be somewhat unavoidable given the nature of the tool that I'm using to pierce the system here. Okay, here we are a couple minutes later. Make sure this valve is closed so we don't get a nasty surprise there. And we shouldn't get more yep, than just the tiniest little spit of refrigerant out of that hose. 
now that I've gone ahead and purged the machine, there might be a very little bit of vapor here that's yet to come out of this system when I pop this tool off. Yeah, there's not much there. Just a little spit of gas. You can see the hole that it made. And now it's done. How's about we make it twice as nice? This is a dehumidifier that was probably recalled for reason of being a fire hazard because someone beat me to cutting the cord off of it. I actually found this in the basement of a foreclosed house and just quietly spirited it away, figuring that at some point I would eventually get around to recovering the refrigerant charge from it so that it could be safely and properly disposed of. And it's just amazing. These little boogers, they get into everything. There's not just one of them on this thing. You know, the other one may have fallen off, but there were two of them. <laughs> At least nobody seems to be home any longer. I'll go ahead and just blow that out of there just to make myself feel a little more at ease even though I'm sure it's completely dead. Those of you in the viewing audience who are wearing headphones, you may want to go ahead and turn your volume control down in the next couple of seconds, okay? Here goes. Come on, get out of there. Okay, maybe that's not the best tool for the job. There we go. Now it's gone. I don't know if this thing's still under positive pressure or not. If you ask me, and it doesn't really seem to show up that well on camera, I would say the tubing looks a little oily. And these are, of course, infamous for losing their charge. Oh yeah. Look at how badly degraded that suction line is. I will be surprised if this thing is still under positive pressure, but we're about to find out in just a moment, thanks to the magic of video editing. Well, folks, color me seriously amazed. I'd say it's a little low based on that reported temperature of 67 and a half degrees or thereabouts, but it does appear that it is still under positive pressure. So, We'll go ahead and we'll open this up. And we'll go clear over here after we open this up. And we'll bleed our lines again. Yeah, I don't think there's much in that system. I would tell you it has almost certainly leaked down. We'll valve this off over here at the recovery machine. Open this up again. And we'll just see what we get. Must be more in there than I'm giving it credit for. But it's just the same kind of process as the first one. Just a waiting game. Also helps to do this on a relatively cool day. It's about 75 or 6 degrees Fahrenheit out. Those of you who measure with other units, I'm sure you can convert that yourselves instead of complaining about it. Gee, does it sound like I have an opinion about that? <laughs> the thermal imaging camera. You're not really going to be able to see this very well in the sun, so I'll actually make a movie here and stick it in the video so you can see what I saw. But the bottom of the compressor is definitely getting to be quite cold to the touch as the refrigerant boils out of the oil as it's being pumped out of the system and into the recovery tank.
And here again, much the same kind of thing. We should only get the tiniest little spit of refrigerant gas out of there after I've gone ahead and purged the machine. And the same thing will be true down here. Just the tiniest little spit. There's the puncture. And that's all there is to it. It's over. Now these can go off to be scrapped or recycled or whatever they need to be from here. So now the video does truly conclude. As always, thank you for watching and certainly do feel free to leave a constructive comment if you happen to have one.